Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for today's video. It's match preview. Sheffield United versus Manchester United. Plenty to discuss in today's video, Red. So you know the score by now. Get involved in today's chat. First of all, United have had up and down form, let's face it. Yeah. But surely this is a game we expect the three points. Yeah, well, we expect it. It's vital. A win is vital. We cannot mm. entertain anything but a win. We've got four games now in the space of just over 10 days. Uh, and this is the start of it. And we have to win. I, I just can't entertain anything but a win. So Eric Ten Hag has got to get this spot on. We'll get further updates on Friday from his press conference. Yeah. But on international duty, you had Casemiro picked up an injury. Amrabat as well. There's rumours that he's picked up an injury as well. We've withdrawing from the squad on Tuesday night. So in that midfield area, is it Scott McTominay for you that comes in? Well, you, you've got all uh, international duty. Injuries are there. Eric Ten Hag, mm. he'll look at it, he'll assess it. And I think he'll have an eye on Tuesday's game. Yeah. I don't think he'll risk players, to be honest with you, uh, who might have a slight injury. So you might see Casemiro and Amrabat. Amrabat being withdrawn the other night from Morocco team. Uh, unspecified mm. uh, injury. So that that is a worry. Casemiro didn't train over the weekend. So who goes in midfield? Well, I'm not sure of how he's going to set up in that midfield, but I'll tell you what, Scott McTominay has forced his way in, as far as I'm concerned, into that team with his performance there against Brentford. Yeah, I totally agree. And with you saying that, looking forward to Tuesday night, that's a massive game as well for Copenhagen. We need to get three points on the board there in the Champions League. Yeah. So could you possibly see maybe a midfield two with Ericsson and Scott McTominay? Yeah, you, you can see that uh, Sheffield Sheffield United away. I can see that, and Tuesday night is vital. And like I say, Eric Ten Hag will have an eye on it. He's got four games there, and this is the start of the four games. And to be honest, they're all must wins. How 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 he does that, I don't know. On the form, what we've seen this season, uh, but it's got to start at Sheffield United. But you know, you look at McTominay, you look at Ericsson, It's Sheffield United to me. That's how it's got to be. Yeah, um, I think it was before or after the game. He mentioned with Rafael Varane against Brentford that he picked up a small issue and that's why he didn't play. Now, we've got a run of fixtures coming up, big games as well. A yeah. few games in a matter of days. So, would you risk Rafael Varane going into this game against Sheffield United away? Well, he's it's, it's got to get the game in. And if he starts, then you've got to say to yourself, who does he partner? Yes, there is a shout uh, for Harry Maguire uh, and another centre-half. Uh, which one? I'm not sure. Johnny Evans in there as well. Every time he's played, Lindelof. Man United have won the game this season. Burnley and Brentford. Yeah, well, put some some solid performances in as well. So surely he's in for a shout. Well, you know, you look at Johnny Evans's performance against Burnley away, absolutely fantastic, and it might be that type of game again. Mm. Uh, so you just don't know. Varane, will he risk him? That is the question. But if he does put uh, Varane in, then who does he who does he partner with? Uh, I. I it has to be Lindelof as far as I'm concerned. But I think what he might do, he might wait till Tuesday night. We you know we've got the City game coming uh, the following weekend. Then we've got Newcastle in the Cup. Yeah. So he might just wait. This is all, all the news we're going to be waiting for tomorrow uh, when we do our video and that. So we'll get the updates. But who partners Varane? Will he play? We'll have to wait and see. But I prefer, to be honest with yeah. you, uh, Go on, give it me. Who do you prefer in the centre half position? I want Varane and Lindelof there. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not really bothered about the other games coming up. I think you've got to take one game at a time. And, and I go back to it. So it's, you think if Varane's fit, start with your strongest back two, and then maybe around about that 60, 70 minutes, bring on the likes of Harry Maguire or Johnny Evans. I'm not even thinking 60, 70 minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking we need the strong side out there and we've got to take that them three points. Yeah. It's so vital to get them three points. Uh, the next game in the league is uh, City. Uh, that's going to be tough at home. So we have to get the three points. We can't just keep falling apart, falling behind. Uh, the strongest side, that's what I want out there. Uh, obviously, injuries are going to have a, a little bit of a shout on that. On the left-hand side, you've got Regulon. Is he going to be available? I hope so, to be honest with you, because yeah. it'll give us some more balance on that left-hand side and switch the low back over to the right-back spot. You know, Amrabat's been playing there as well on the left-back. Not really done it for me. No, not But he has me. come in and done a job. And you can see he's got the personality to play wherever the manager wants him. But you can clearly see it's not a position he's going to be used to or to be effective in big games going forward in the season. But going more to up top, Bruno Fernandes, always nailed on to start. Yeah. On the right-hand side, 
Anthony comes back in for me. He should start. Mm. Uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't start. Uh, yes, Anthony, yeah, solid performer out there. Keeps hold of the ball. We'll look for the ball. People out there, you know, even ourselves, uh, we want a little bit more from him. But uh, he's in the he's in the starting eleven without a shadow of a doubt. And then I've got a look on the left hand side. Uh, Rashford got to come in, uh, got to do the business, uh, and then you look at the centre forward position. I think this is a big game for Rashford though, because if you look at the previous two games, Ten Hag's actually been hooking him off around about that sixty to seventy minute mark for Garnacho, who when has come on. He's made an impact or is at least impressed in terms of his work rate, his work ethic, tracking back, but also going forward, always looking at creating, getting his head up, trying to look for players in the box. Listen, there's always going to be that, uh, well, I say argument, uh, that, Comparison. De that that debate about Garnacho, uh, Rashford's form, mm. is, he, is he on it and all that. But, you know, I don't see anything uh, getting in the way of Rashford being on that uh, starting 11 against Sheffield United. I think he'll have a good game. Uh, I think he'll be looking for it. And the reason why is, uh, I think, being in that England camp and his performance the other night, I think he'll be uh, looking and raring to go for this. So the debate will go on, yeah. especially with the way we're playing, the results we're getting. It will always be there. But I think, what's the name, after the England performance, what he put in the other night, I think Rashford uh, will be right up for this. I've, I've no worries for him. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we need to start our strongest possible 11 for this one. Yeah. Let's see if that game against Brentford in the manner in how we won it is a turning point in our season to give the lads momentum going forward, yeah. to start picking up wins, getting points on the board. And like we said there before, we've got some big, important games coming up. So yeah. if Rashford can start this one and get some confidence as well, we've seen how bad his confidence was against Galatasaray instead of shooting when he was one-on-one -on -one looking for Bruno Fernandes to square the ball. If he can get on the score sheet once or twice or at least get a couple assists in this game, I'm sure that'll give him momentum and confidence going forward into the big games. Yeah, I I, I think when you when you look at momentum and confidence, I think what has to happen here, uh, the one the one thing I will be clearly looking at is Bruno's performance. I think he needs to put in a captain's performance. International duty, players won't really have had that much time training together. Uh, so at Sheffield United, Bruno has to put in a captain's performance and get them three points. Uh, they are so vital. But Bruno, to me, he's the one everyone should have their eye on. Main man up front, Rasmus Hoyland has to be, done it? Was it San Marino? Denmark played, he did come out on social media. I think there's been quite a bit said on it in the media that you know, he should be expecting tackles like he is getting. What is mo what's he moaning about now? I did see one of the stills where he's got a knee right into his back, but is this kind of what he should be expecting now? You're the main man at Manchester United. You're going to be dealing with the dark arts week in, week out now for defenders to try and put you off your game, so... No, I think I think the other night when he he came out about the tackle, uh, I think he had every right. Really, it yeah. was uh, outrageous, uh, and I think it was just him expressing himself. Look, that this lad's a big tough lad. He's going to put it put it about himself, so he knows what's coming. This is the Premier League, uh, and I think he'll just get stuck right in. Sheffield United will be a bit tougher than San Marino, but no, for me, Hoyland has to start. Uh, I can't see Marshall uh, starting. He'll be on the bench, uh, and he might be needed at some point, but uh, let's hope we get the win. That's what I want. Yeah, Rasmus Hoyland, United in the Premier League. I think it's a match made in heaven. Any score predictions? Anything else more to add? Uh, a score prediction, to be honest with you, I think it'll be a battle. Uh, and I did mention Burnley uh, before with uh, Johnny Evans. And I think it could end up that type of game again. Mm. Sheffield United fighting for their life. And I mean fighting for their life. They're not going to be no walkover. Uh, and I think this is going to be such a tough game. I'm actually going for the same scoreline as Burnley away, 1-0. Yeah, I hope Casemiro or Amrabat are fit to play this game and start it because I'd like to see one of them partner McTominay in the midfield. I think in their midfield, they've got Ollie Norwood and Souza in there. Yeah. And I think if we win the battle in midfield, you know, with the strength, you know, on the front foot, you know, pressing, I think we do win the game. All we don't need is in the first 15, 20 minutes for their crowd to be given any encouragement whatsoever because Sheffield United will need their crowd to get anything from this game, in my opinion. So on the front foot, from the whistle, and I expect to win the game comfortably. I'm going to go 3 0 Manchester United. Yeah, well, that, that 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 thing, what you said there about the crowd, the crowd will be right behind yeah. them. There's no two ways about it. So, it, you know, they have to stop that crowd, quieting them down, uh, and get into the game. But 
I think it's going to be very difficult if there's one or two players who are out with injury. But that's why I go for a tight game, me, because I don't think everyone's fully fit and we'll get the update soon. Yeah, we will be back on Friday with updates from Eric Ten Hag's press conference. Any other Manchester United news as well. Just like to thank everyone for joining us today. If you've enjoyed it, smash a like and you know the score, Reds. Get involved in the chat. Thank you.